From the Tie Cats Audio Network, this is the Tie Cats This Week with RJ Broadhead and Luke Tasker. It's time for Tie Cats This Week. I'm RJ Broadhead. He's Luke Tasker. Uh, we call the games for the Tiger Cats, and we were fresh off a win against Montreal. That was a fun game to call. It got interesting there at the end. And I have to go back to last week on Tie Cats This Week, Luke. We had a discussion of a must-win, and by the letter of the law, you're right. It it wasn't a must-win for the Tiger Cats against Montreal, but boy, didn't it make things a lot better this week going into the game against Toronto coming up on Saturday, and they got a little help, too. Montreal yeah. loses to Winnipeg. Ottawa beats Toronto. Now it's a first-place battle on Saturday. All of a sudden, they go from one win to playing for first place. Absolutely. It helps things uh, greatly with the win last week. And you and I are going to go back and forth uh, all season about <laughs> what qualifies as a must win. And, and I, I, I take your uh, criteria to mean sort of a morale, maybe must win because it would feel very differently. And there'd be some different conversations going on about the tie cats. Uh, well, they'd be tied with Ottawa now with one win. Exactly. Yeah. And so it would feel uh, very different here, but I'm telling you, how powerful is it going to be when I get to say a must win at some point this year? Because we'll, we'll we'll inevitably get, if not for the Tie Cats, we'll get to, we'll get to some must win games where everything's on the line for some of these teams in the East. And uh, but yeah, RJ, they're sitting. You know that win it feels it makes everything feel different about the season. And now we have a great matchup uh, 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 this this weekend in Toronto uh, for for first place in the East. Yeah, when you say must win, it's going to have a, a lot of credence, maybe more so than when I say it. <laughs> it, it was it was um, a nice win to have. They yeah. all of a sudden it just really changes the season. And and I was going through and I was looking at the defense, Luke, and flashing back to that Montreal game. And I'll run through a few things. Um, they only allowed one touchdown this in that game. That was the fewest they've allowed in a game this season. Uh, kept the opposition under 100 yards for the sixth time in seven games, 100 yards rushing, that is. Um, this is kind of an offense and defense, these next two. Fourth straight game, more net yards than opposition. Uh, quarterback sacks, first time they didn't allow any, so that's great for the offensive line. Mm -hmm. But five sacks by the defensive line, so they were unbelievable. 11 knockdowns in that game. Cam Kelly comes up with his... Um, third interception of the season. Julian Hauser's been all over the quarterbacks. This defense, it wasn't long ago they had allowed, and turnovers played into it, but uh, second most points allowed in the CFL. Now, all of a sudden, second fewest in the East Division. The numbers are starting to to flatten out, and, and the defensive numbers are, are really excellent. Have we, we've given the defense credit, but have we given it enough credit for what they've done this season? Well, I think that they're trending correctly because it wasn't, they weren't playing uh, uh, perfect football to start off. I mean, they were, they were just as much the issue as the offense. And I don't want to say just as much. The turnovers were obviously the, the, the real Achilles heel early in the season for the Ticats, but they, they played well against Montreal, meaning the defense. Uh, and I think you have to point out, Cariel Brooks, who was back in the lineup and had a really, really yes. solid game in the secondary. And that secondary, 2021, right at the top of the league for interceptions and and knockdowns. And that game was, was back to that level of excellence in the defensive secondary. But it goes hand in hand, the rush and, and the coverage. And came into that game last week with 10 sacks, and they got five more in, in that game itself and and most of them coming in, in early in the game I and mean, it was really they were they were putting legitimate serious pressure on Trevor Harris um you know how much I love seeing Dylan win back there and Micah Johnson that was just awesome <laughs> to see you know and the uh yes and the uh uh you, you know I think I think when they when they have success up, up front with the with the front four that's when those pass that's when those knockdowns and interceptions start <laughs> becoming easier right I mean an easier is a strange word to use for that but it is I mean they get it it helps those guys in the secondary and Jamal Roll and Cariel Brooks and Tunde Adelike you know we just they were all over the field uh in in that game against Montreal I, I just think if we see them string more games like that together um you know th that's going to be another sign of the many that are going that that of things going well for the Ticats but I gotta say RJ that the fourth quarter's 
are still a glaring issue. And even in the victory, they were way outscored in the fourth quarter. And the defense yeah. is part, the defense has its part in that too. Teams have had success stringing drives together in the fourth quarter. That's got to get fixed. Yeah, it was eight points off a turnover uh, again that uh, Montreal got in the fourth quarter. Those fourth quarter turnovers, uh, and I mean, it made the game way more interesting than it needed to be. Exactly, and that turnover happened way in Montreal's territory, but still yes. they pieced together a long drive and turned points off. You know, like how much that is, you know so many momentum building moments back to back, meaning you get the turnover, then you get a sustained drive and a touchdown and a two point conversion. It's like, man, everything starts rolling downhill and snowballing. And it started with the turnover. Like it has so many times. Well, I was feeling pretty good in that game in the second half because the Tiger cats hadn't won a third quarter. They'd only scored 12 points in six games total in the third quarter. Then they scored 14 and things were looking great. <laughs> Man, you know, it's it's the entertainment business. You got to entertain the fans, make it close, make it fun at the end. It so was, that's what it was they're, they're just keeping yeah. it all in. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. If it only worked that way. Hey? <laughs> uh, I, I think Tiger Cats fans would like a, a big win, a, a comfortable win. But Toronto is has given the Tiger Cats problems. They were better in the regular season last season. But in the playoffs, Tiger Cats won when it really mattered. Argos have been tough to figure out. You know, they're in first place. They're 3-3. Three and three. They've had some great games. They've had some not-so-great games. Ottawa just beat them. That's a, a big win for the Red Blacks. And congratulations to Sean Burke, the, the former Tiger Cat, getting his first win as the general manager in Ottawa. But how, how do you see this game playing out against the Argos? It's... Tiger Cats had a slow start. They seem to be coming around, and Argos have been inconsistent. Yeah, and the Argos have kind of been they, – they came off, though, not playing great. You know, and it's funny because you put any any of them in the West, and they're, and they're not looking very good. And Winnipeg has more, no. <laughs> more wins than the East, right? It's like well, – <laughs> Yeah, you know, they combined yeah, all those teams. it's not great. But, but Toronto got off to a to – a, a, kind of the they they kind of claimed first place early on and have kind of been you know holding on by the by the tips of their fingers to that but the storylines around Toronto to me have turned a little bit negative in the last couple of weeks and they've got some things they're trying to work out too and every team in the east is trying to find their identity and sort of you know lay claim to 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 their position in a in a playoff race but yeah, yeah, Toronto. Toronto has some some turbulence they're going through right now, uh, and it seems to me like it like it's on the field. It's a performance thing, and they've also there. You can see some headlines, and as you look back through, and you know, there's some things, uh, sort of personnel and player wise too, that aren't going great. And so, uh, point being, uh, you know, an opportunity for the Tie Cats to go in there, and that because the Tie Cats and you know. The, the whole season we've been saying, you know, they're much better than their record suggests. Right. And they and and they're doing so many things right. But then coming up short where it really counts. And now they've strung two two out of three wins, uh, two out of two out of three games uh, wins. And so it's trending correctly. But to go to Toronto and they're going to be hungry and ready to start off this, you know, four out of five game rivalry stretch. They are they're going to be ready to. Uh, just like the Thai Cats say, draw a line in the sand. Now is where we, you know, really become the team that we that we've intended to since training camp, and so they're going to be ready too. And they get to start off this thing at home, uh, you know, at their at their home field. And uh, boy, it's going to be exciting. I think we're going to see a good game. And I actually would would think RJ that yes, Thai Cat want Thai Cat fans, of course, have want, we're everyone's dying to see a, you know clear victory you know a 20 point spread victory i don't think we're going to get it i think we're going to have a close game <laughs> no. i think we're going to have a close game and it's going to come down to the fourth quarter you're going to have end of game drives here it just it just um it, it's the way the season's gone and i expect more yeah yeah i think that sounds about right and i like what you said about winning two of the last three so the tie cats record is two and five but we can make that sound really good they're coming <laughs> off a win they've won two of their last three they're undefeated against the east division so that uh, that sounds a lot better than yeah. the start they had so but it's all about these these six games we've talked about it since game one or two of the season that these middle six games now they're into game two of these middle six took care of business against Montreal. These four of the next five games against Toronto, this can really dictate the season for 
either team, really, if one of them can have a, a lot of success against the opposition. So crucial, not must win, but I really felt that Calgary Winnipeg game last week had a real playoff feel to it yeah. because a lot of people were picking Calgary and Winnipeg. You know, they obviously, yeah, they, they don't want to lose. They're nine and a, yeah, they, uh, they were going to prove they were still the best team. I kind of get the sense we're going to have that feel between the Tiger Cats and Argos. Obviously the rivalry's there, but I think both teams playing each other for the next five games. They realize that this is a real turning could, could be a turning point in the season. Yeah. And it just establishes so much, you know, for the, for the rest of the of these four games ahead of them, you know, if you can kind of get that first win, you're sort of up on up on the throne, looking looking down, you know, going uh, go, uh going going forward. And so, boy, I, I think you know, it, it, for Hamilton to put the last of the woes, not the last, you're always you're never going to play a perfect game. There's going to be mistakes, but it it stands out that the last of those dominoes to fall in the, at the start of the season, it was the turnovers, and they've sort of put they've sort of gotten. They've put, they've put, they made great gains there, especially offensively, meaning in you know, turning the ball over less. Um, and the defensive takeaways have increased as well. But, you know, that was the first issue, and they're sort of getting better. And that last huge issue to me is finishing the games and the fourth quarters that have just been atrocious, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's been, yeah. it's been so, so hard to kind of watch it start to slip for whatever reason. And if they can fix that issue, I, I do think they're going to come become legitimately very hard to beat. And just to back that up, the Tiger Cats won the turnover battle against Montreal, wound up winning the game, and it was the first time all season Tiger Cats did not throw an interception. So they'd like to keep that streak going and yeah. and limit those turnovers. I've, I've followed a lot of fan reaction on the on the three quarterback thing with the Tiger Cats, and maybe more so Matt Schiltz coming in and for random plays it seems and and Dane Evans leaving and and some fans think it's great uh, it keeps the other team on its toes they don't know what's coming other fans want to see one one quarterback in there at all times and congratulations to Jamie Newman on his first CFL touchdown but all three quarterbacks saw some action in that game against Montreal do you like that variety I think you're at a place where success has started to come when uh, when Matt Schultz has had a hand in the games and maybe it's a chicken and egg scenario you know like if you know who, who knows yeah. what the if it's correlation or causation but the but <laughs> I think Matt Matt Schultz has been a positive impact on the team and I think when he gets out there I've, I've liked I've liked his efforts in the run game when he's kept the ball um you know you think back to that to that late interception that he threw at Tim Horton's field, but that but scenario, it was a very bizarre, you know, it's hard to come in there and, and, and do that, that because at that moment it was sort of unexpected for him to enter the game. I, I think uh, I would keep rolling with it. I don't know why, but I think Dane Evans does well um, when in, in bizarre situations like this. Um, and who knows, maybe just chalk it up to, to mental toughness or just an ability to uh, handle adversity or in a more, or in a more positive sense, you also just get a, a break, you know, you can kind of, you kind of refresh every now and again. Uh, and if the chemistry is good between those quarterbacks and obviously it goes back to uh, solely in Dane in 2021, but if the chemistry is good, then sometimes that can just, they can kind of, you know, foster each other's, you know, you know, the best parts of each other's games. And we've seen some excitement with both of them on the field to, 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 a degree of success. And then at times it, it sort of looked a little bit, you know, uh, you know, got broken up quickly or, or some risky plays or you can think back to BC with that double pass that was very close to being, you know, disaster. And actually Matt Schultz turned it into a positive play. Uh, I, I think, I think we'll continue to see on a called a not prof, non-professional note. I, I think it's exciting to watch. I don't mind looking. Yeah, me too. Field. He kind of alerts you saying, you know, we're in the booth kind of going, Oh, RJ, look, look, look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and, you know it's fun yeah yeah you're uh you're slapping me in the back when both quarterbacks are on there like we're gonna have something come here what, yeah. what's it gonna be 
Yeah, yeah and I, I I almost blew it for him a couple of weeks ago on Tie Cats this week, saying that uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> they've been practicing it. So we're not we're not talking about it. We're not we're not, I don't know what they're doing in practice. Let's just leave it at that. So yeah. any uh, anybody scouting us because I know this is you know this is a big show oh, for the opposition. Oh me. my goodness, <laughs> they're listening to it across across the country. <laughs> Speaking of the opposition. Your buddy, Speedy B, in the double blue. That's going to be uh, weird for Tiger Cats fans to to witness and, and hear about. What, what are your your thoughts? And he, he's still got a little gas left in the tank. He's had a pretty solid season for the Argos. Yeah, he's playing good. And uh, I just, I'm just i so excited to see him on the field again. You know, he, he just has such a presence uh, out there and, and just with his speed and just his, uh, his ability to make those timely big plays. He's a true, true, you know, all-star, a true gamer, man. He just, he, 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 he'll get six points at the, you know, speaking as a tie cat, you know, he gets six points at the worst times, you know, uh, <laughs> when he's, when he's in, when he's in the double blue now. So uh, really excited to see him out there and, It'll be interesting to see when he comes to Tim Hortons field. We'll touch on that, you know, next week. And, uh, but, uh, you're going to have to all of this, all of his former teammates that are, that are going up, going to Toronto to play him this week. You know, they've never had to truly game plan uh, against him. You know, he's always been a, a tool in the toolbox, you know, um, as opposed to this, to a, to a, to an enemy. So uh, it'll be interesting. And, and if he's getting some returns out there, you got to keep your eye on him. And, uh, he has been, he has run, Hundreds of routes against these DBs, though never for that, never for points that mattered. But uh, it'll be exciting to watch. I'm sure we'll be talking about that throughout the broadcast. Yeah, there'll be a little competition there. I'm I'm sure because there's probably yeah. still some friendships. I would assume. And of course, I wouldn't be surprised. We saw it with the Red Blacks. They really game planned with Jalen Acklin, especially on that first drive at Tim Hortons Field. He got That's a right. touchdown. Like, I wouldn't be surprised early on if Brandon Banks is heavily involved. Would you? Uh, no, I won't be surprised at all. And I, and I think and throughout the game, like they're not going to let this game go by without giving him some, sh- some chances downfield. They're going to put it up and, and see if he can get, get behind, uh, get behind some of the secondary. So, it, and I, I agree with you, RJ. I will, I also won't be surprised if we see that early, you know, if we see yeah. him take a shot and then again, to, to go back to the, 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 the season layout, it's four games nearly in a row. So we'll, we'll see how his involvement maybe maybe changes or you know adapts as the games go on mcleod bethel thompson doesn't run a lot maybe similar in the sense to trevor harris do you think the the defense will after that big game with five sacks against montreal that they're kind of uh, addicted to the sack now and be going after him uh i i would think so i mean that is that is why those guys are football players, man. That's the that's the perfection of that position is when you get a quarterback sack, uh, and and I think they're going to be uh, turned up and, and ready to go. And it's also so tangible for those guys when they go watch the film how helpful that was to their entire team and especially the rest of their defense. The other seven guys out there on defense, you know, just how just how you know just how helpful that was in their efforts. And so, man, they're they're going to be ready to go. Yeah, well, you look at the the game was close and really pushed Montreal at a field goal range at least once, maybe a couple of times. And that's a good point. And also that first quarter, RJ, was just amazing. The ball yeah. was entirely in the tight on the tie cats end of the field, and by the end time the the first half ended, they had only let two field goals in. They had six points on the board. That was an incredible defensive half. Yeah, and and I'm convinced teams can't run against this Hamilton defense. I'm always surprised when there's a, a gain of over five yards, which is good for Ty Cats fans. You you, mm. you don't want to be like, oh wow, stopping at three yards, that's rare. <laughs> so so <laughs> <laughs> not allowing many uh, many big rushes, but Andrew Harris will be will be a challenge for sure. Yeah, he's a great he's a great player. He's up there in the all time. Uh, yardage, uh, r- rushing yards list in the league history, and and you got you, you can't you can't not have a plan for that, and and it's a it's a weapon that the Argos they paid they paid for it they you know they yeah. they bought it and they and they are able to use it, and so it's just part of the part of the efforts when you have to go up against them, you have to watch out for 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 that kind of uh, that kind of player, and uh, he's obviously had 
an incredible impact on all the teams he's been a part of. And and so now now he's in the double blue and, and the Ticats have to be ready for him uh, for the next month. Yeah, I, I, I just feel that defense is looking forward to the challenge. Simone's yeah, back. I agree. Kyle, Kyle Wilson was terrific filling in, but having Simone back, uh, tell us how much of an impact you think that'll have. Well, we all know about his energy and what he's what he what he is as part of this team, you know, even apart from his performance. But then when you look at his performance, I mean, he's uh, speaking of league leaders, he's climbing up, he's climbing up the ranks all time in tackles, and he's the all time Ticat leader in tackles and. Uh, you, you can't speak highly enough about it. And I've always said Simone's forever 21, meaning <laughs> 21 and 21 years old. He's just, he's just high motor, <laughs> high energy. And, uh, and especially, you know, and I, what I hope RJ is that it's, is that he's truly healthy, you know, that, that, mm-hmm. uh, he's not, uh, pushing to get back, uh, uh, earlier than his body is saying he should. And obviously we, no one, no one's privy to that except for the, except for the, you know, the, the, it, people inside the, the locker room walls, but uh, you can assume that they're that they're you, that he's doing what's what's best for chances at a Grey Cup, and so we, hopefully this is the uh, his first game back and and his last time being out. Yeah, I, you're probably right. It would be hard to keep him out of the lineup if, even if he wasn't 100 percent in the game yeah. against the Argos. <laughs> but yeah, you'd have to think that he's he's feeling much much better. I don't know how often players are 100 percent seven eight games into the season Mm -hmm. yeah you're right and maybe if you i remember times actually where a little thing happened in the season and so you kind of got to step out i uh tore my quad once and you step out of the season for a couple games to get that right but meanwhile everything a couple of games a torn quad (laughs) yeah and i still you're a fast healer (laughs) i still got issues from that torn quad but the the uh you know, as you get that injury healthy, the little things all over your body from that started in training camp are actually get, are actually getting better. You know, beyond where they could where they would have been, and so sometimes you get that perfect you know uh, little little spell of healing. And, and if you handle an injury right, and I had ones that I handled right and handled poorly, but if you handle them right, you come back and and uh, and you're and you're better for it. Well, fingers crossed for Simone. Another change: Mike Jones at wide receiver. It, it'll be good to see him in a Ticats uniform. The the yeah. bad news there is Tyler Turnowski got injured. He just seemed to be emerging with some big plays. Keandre Smith came up with his first CFL reception, but but Mike Jones in there at uh, at wide receiver and and Durant at the slot back who wasn't targeted at all. We kind of expected he'd be used a little more against mm-hmm. Montreal, but uh, on that on that right side with Durant and Jones, what do you expect to see? Yeah, I'm excited for it. Um, you know, two national guys and, and you get the, you get Mike Jones who, you know, I was, I was around for his multiple, for his first seasons around there. And he, uh, by the, by the time I was done with the Ticats, he had developed into a legitimate weapon and, and I mean, great, great speed. And he's one of those guys where you won't say his name until all of a sudden he catches a, a 50 yard touchdown pass, you know, and he just, uh. <laughs> And that's sort of the nature of the of you know far far right wide receiver right the Z or the Z guy out there and you got to uh, you, but you can't sleep on Mike Jones he's got legitimate legitimate professional speed and uh, yeah excited to see him uh, back in Hamilton good good player and and uh, a good guy in the locker room too. Tiger Cats coming off a win against Montreal Argonauts coming off a loss against Ottawa. What's your gut tell you for Saturday? Well, I think I think Hamilton is poised to establish themselves at first. I really do, and I love playing at BMO Field. I love it. I it's just a great. Uh, it's got its quirks, and we'll talk. We'll save it for the broadcast. And you should tune into the Ticats Audio Network and 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 uh, and and have a listen on the game if you can't watch it uh, live or you're not going to be at the stadium. And we'll talk about the field there. And there's some quirky things, including the strangeness in the end zones and the depths and stuff but man i just i always loved playing there it's a short drive away and the the, the it's a soccer you know true grass field and uh it just a, a exciting uh exciting uh, uh time and you're always going to have black and gold in the stands man there's always going to yes. be uh, a home a hometown feel uh just a great uh, a great energy for Ticats. yeah fill that crowd tiger cats fans and uh, we'll see what happens another big game we're not calling it a must win, but it's a big game. We can we agree on that? 
I I wholeheartedly agree. Huge game and uh, going to set the tone for the next month of football between the Ticats and the uh, Argos. Awesome. Great chatting with you, Luke, and uh, can't wait to chat with you during the game on Saturday. Awesome. See you there. So 7 o'clock kickoff between the Tiger Cats and the Argos from BMO Field. We will have the call for you. Kickoff, 7 o'clock. We'll chat to you then. That's another edition of Tie Cats This Week. Thanks for listening to the Tie Cats Audio Network. It's been another busy week for your Hamilton Tiger Cats. Luke Tasker and RJ Broadhead have covered it all, and now we would like to hear from you. Email us anytime at gameday at Subscribe to the Tie Cats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.